Young, good morning. Hey, good morning. Um, the symposium taking place here in Amsterdam, uh, housing the social, social housing. Um, could you please uh, begin by telling a little bit what uh, this title, this term, um, means for you and your practice? Okay. Um, this title, actually, I, I gave a description yesterday that social housing is kind of house for social society. However, we, uh, we also have to take the other dimensions into the consideration, including ecology, so, uh, economy, and uh, politics and the culture. So basically, I think social housing is, is um, kind of housing for the general society, not for some uh, specific uh, social classes, but generally for all the society and for long term, not in the short term. So uh, that is going to use our uh, land and uh, our spaces <coughs> in a, a comprehensive way. Yeah. <coughs> uh, you mean that for the, the situation in China, or is that a universal generally. idea, generally? <coughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. And when you say long term, do you have a, can you give us an indication of, uh, albeit in con uh, broad points, uh, what do you think is necessary <coughs> for such a, a long term durable realization of this yes, notion. Of sometimes country. housing are good for short term. For example, the commercial housing, for example, in, in, in China and also in all of the world, for short term, uh, it's going to stimulate the economy in a very uh, fantastic way, but in long term, it actually is really like a big drug. Uh, keep exciting for a short time, but it's killing the whole body for long term. So uh, I think that, that could be a lesson for social housing also. And another, another example is outside housing. For example, uh, everybody wants to give a baby and they give the human right to the baby, but if everybody is giving more and more baby and then the planet is boom, booming. So for short term is good, but for long term we have to give consideration that it's going to go to a dead end. Yeah, so we need to have long term consideration on our future. The, you mentioned, uh, you know, if everybody has a child, you really need to consider what kind of uh, repercussions this has. Yeah. Um, obviously every, uh, social class, but also every individual situation is, is a different one. Some people want to stay with their families, other people want to have a house and a business. Mm -hmm. uh, some people want to have three kids, others just one. Mm -hmm. um, maybe some workers want to live together and mm -hmm. it's not any kind of link to a family. Mm -hmm. These are all different kinds of situations. Could you maybe give an idea of how this notion of the social uh, can encompass uh, mm -hmm. all these uh, possibilities? Uh, you, you want to give me uh, me to give an uh, example or my, just my understanding? Um, your understanding, and if you can support it with an example, please. Yeah, uh, basically I think uh, the society, including the state, I mean including some, uh, some people working for the state, but basically the social, uh, especially social intellectuals, uh, and uh, who have more objective and rational and uh, comprehensive understanding of uh, the world we are living should uh, give explanations, uh, elaborations uh, of the world to the society, uh, what kind of situation we are facing with. Uh, so um, we are uh, always in uh, uh, different specific situations that uh, we need to cope with. So uh, I mean, the intellectuals should, should explain this to the society to make uh, different uh, directions for this situation. So sometimes we need more babies, sometimes we need less babies, so uh, we need to explain what is the best scenario, what is, what is the worst scenario. And, uh, and then in some other time, we need even harder uh, discipline on the whole movement of the society. I mean, we can have soft uh, propaganda and uh, soft movement, but some other times, the state should come up to say, uh, this is going to the dead end, and then some other times we need to have some uh, harder uh, uh, management on, on the uh, uh, movement that is going to very obviously to a crisis. So you see the relevance and um, um, the positive aspect of a collaboration with a system that's already in place, uh, mm -hmm. and an understanding that that system will evolve uh, with the dynamic society that it represents? Uh, when you talk about system, we have to understand uh, that there are different systems. But in China, I still think China has a central government 
that is thinking about longer consideration. But uh, for some other country, for, for example, the United States, somehow the federal government is quite uh, kidnapped by a few people. And uh, this is because of a lot of reasons. But I'm talking about China. If the central government is doing something like this, and then we think uh, there is a way to communicate and uh, somehow assist the whole system to get in the positive way. But um, people are always confusing uh, the role of central government and the local government in China. Uh, however, local government is in uh, also very different situations. Uh, it's in a kind of uh, top-down system, but still also bottom up. So uh, literally, it has to obey the rules from the central government, but uh, practically, uh, the local government is quite like federal system and very competitive. And uh, they somehow cannot uh, uh, obey the real demand uh, from the people and also uh, obey the uh, commands from the central government. So uh, we have to di uh, distinguish this kind of different concentration in China. Yeah. <coughs> Can you give us uh, some examples? Because what it sounds like you're saying is that through this um uh, when considering the fact that local government actually ha has to position itself competitively, uh, both to its uh, the people it represents, mm -hmm. as well as perhaps local governments amongst themselves, I, I don't know. Um, uh, maybe give an example of a project uh, in terms of social housing where uh, you can see that there is uh, a direct answer to a need has been given. Uh. Uh, examples is that uh, some local governments, uh, although there are uh, already a lot of commands uh, from the central government that local government have to build a certain number of social housing in a certain time, but uh, the plan simply cannot be realized in some local government. But for some other local governments, uh, they can invent some kind of uh, inventive way in uh, Given a uh, positive circulation in realizing social housing, for example, in Chongqing, which is a uh, hinterland city in China, their way is, uh, is more or less a new socialism way because they have a, a rich heritage from the socialism time in uh, state owned assets. So the state owned assets uh, is somehow, um, they can monopolize, you can say, monopolize the most positive and the profitable uh, resources of the city, for example, infrastructure, and they combine all these uh, 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 state-owned assets together with the master planning to make increment of uh, the state assets so that they can uh, have more income from this kind of increment. And uh, uh, on the one hand, they can invest uh, this uh, income into the social housing. On the other hand, they can also lower down the uh, taxes for the uh, local entrepreneurs. And uh, when the social housing realized and uh, there are more um, people who would like to live in the city to create more opportunity for cities. So that is a positive case I, I, I can think about. Mm. Yeah. Um, <coughs> this symposium is organized from the sector of visual arts. Um, both its practice and its discourse. W do you see uh, a strong role for artists, but perhaps also architects, mm -hmm. let's call it the, the creative field, uh, cultural producers? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what can their role be in this? Uh, in this I, I can see that. Uh, we were always talking about the, the tension and collaboration between the so state and society. So uh, I think art architects is some, somehow somebody in between. Right? And such, uh, architect, many architects actually are working for the government. They have different clients, but many of them are working for the government. And uh, urban planners are specifically working for the government in, in China. And artists are more or less more individual, uh, but somehow they have the role to uh, give enlightenment and uh, refresh the uh, minds of the common people to understand where they are living, the world they are living. So I think um, both roles can play as bridges in Britain's state and society. <coughs> if you look at the symposium eh, and uh, the people that are on the list, on the bill to, mm -hmm. to speak, um, and perhaps you, uh, who do you think needs to be there? W what kind of people need to be here to hear 
these different cases of, of social conditions and, and on social housing, but also housing the social. Yeah. I think at least we need to have economists to understand the relationship between revenue and the social welfare. And people are always talking about the goodness of social welfare, social housing, but we also have to think about where all the money is coming from. So people have has to understand there is a circulation uh, behind. The, uh, one of the mistakes European countries make recent, recently is that um, the left-wing um, party of uh, some countries are always talking about high social welfare, but high revenue. The right wing always talk about the low and the low, low tax and the low social welfare. But when the left and right is uh, going around, finally they turn up to be low tax and high social welfare. And uh, finally, the uh, country have to live on the, uh, how to say, uh, borrow money from other countries and live on debts. So this is totally not a sustainable way. Germany is kind of against this uh, intention, but the whole European country is against Germany now. So I think there need to be economists here to, um, to give arguments on this kind of circulation. How, uh, the, uh, what is the economic model behind social housing? And then we need sociologists, we need, uh, we need politi politicians, and we need cultural uh, researchers. But I, I think we have all these roles uh, here. But I think we need uh, more stronger uh, economies here. Yeah. Is that a question of organization? There are people who mention the transnational opportunity that we are in today, yeah? mm -hmm. with, with all the media that we have, all the communication possibilities. Uh, the way that I hear you, the answer to your question, it seems that we haven't put that to use yet in, in the way that we actually could in terms of informing the uh, public. Uh, it's, always a, it's always a management to put different people in uh, th this discussion uh, from different perspectives. Yeah, it somehow it's quite dangerous to stand in only one perspective. So we need a crossfire from different perspectives and uh, finally this crossfire will be a kind of uh, reconciliation uh, from different disciplines and I think that could be a positive solution for some crisis now. Okay. Yeah.